We're going to be talking about Fusion Adventure Race. It's a physical and intellectually challenging sporting event that demands courage, commitment, fortitude, stamina, and teamwork. You can imagine there's a tagline of when you cross the finish line, you'll know a little more about yourself. That's what gives some people pause. But we're here to speak to Hayden Allen, champion ambassador, fusion guy, and he joins us for more information about it. How you do, Hayden? I'm good, DK. I'm good. Good afternoon to you and everyone listening. Thank you for joining us. Now, give us a little history on what are some of the things that makes the fusion adventure stand out from some of the other races that might try or attempt to be these around the same kind of fit, filling the same kind of niche market. Yeah, well, Fusion is really born, born out of the eco-adventure racing side of things. Um, so it's a little bit different. It's a global sport with its own intricacies. So in that respect, Fusion has always been putting forward races that really push you to the limit on a number of fronts. Um, and that's what an eco-adventure race tends to do. At Fusion now, it has evolved, and we are saying Fusion, the race that mimics life. That's what we're about. So the, our courses are specifically developed to test your metal and to see what you're about, you know, to be fully engaged in something. And um, that is what makes it different from any other race, really. Now, in terms of pushing someone to the limit to make them find out more about themselves, them, their teams, uh, that seems to need a bit of being proactive to say, okay, well, this is what worked. So we followed up, we got that feedback and we're moving one step further, which makes me feel that you would have been supremely poised to handle the pandemic. So how have you kind of pivoted or dealt with or working through the pandemic that we're seeing now? Well, actually 2020 was supposed to be a major breakout here for Fusion. We had a, an event of Fusion Light planned in Tobago. We had a route already planned, marked and everything. We approached all the stakeholders. And then this was the year we were supposed to break off to go regional. We were talking to the, the, some people at, uh, in St. Lucia, and we were really putting things in place. We already had the blessings and the go ahead to, to host a race in, in St. Lucia. And then the pandemic came. All of that fell flat. Borders have been closed since then. So it's all about evolution, right? Every champion in the true spirit of fusion, whatever comes your way, you just have to adapt. So we adapted and came up with this uh, virtual race, so to speak, a uh, virtual game. Initially, it just felt like that. Let's put on a game um, to keep people engaged, fusionites having something to do to keep the brand going. And uh, it took root and it just, you know, blasted out of the hemisphere. And now I'm sitting here with you talking about, you know, the Fusion brand and the Fusion virtual series and so on. So while we are going to be speaking about the Virtual 7 Challenge, I just want to state it categorically. So if you are looking and you see footage and you see holy for people and people not <laughs> wearing masks, this is not during the pandemic. This would be from before. before I think there's 2009, the there's 2014, uh, there's some other things, but this is not pandemic footage for want of no, a better No, this is not pandemic footage at all. So in terms of that game, okay, we're saying, okay, well, we're starting off as a game because we want to make sure that people still keep uh, the brand in their hearts and minds because many times you have a kind of what, what, what have you done for me lately kind of yes. a philosophy yes. with regard to things. So how did you yeah. initially conceptualize this game? And is it yeah. still where you conceptualized it? So um, when we realized, OK, we plan squashed for 2020 and we had to do something, um, I, I do some running on my own. And uh, I realized that the app that I use to track my run, running and check get data on, it allows me to do something phenomenal. I could run somewhere save it as a segment and an automatic leaderboard. Who runs it the fastest comes up, anyone who runs the race. So I realized, okay, this is an opportunity. So we just started, we said we'll start again at the Run It For Seven Months, the Fusion Virtual Seven Series. The day before the month starts, and we started in November, you will get a map, and you go and attempt this map. 
Are you, of course, you're on Strava, the, the app that tracks the GPS wires and the media leaderboard that comes up. And we will see how it would go every month, this leaderboard would pop up. And we did the first one, Mission Alpha. We created a game, created a hype. You know, it's a, you're, you're on a mission, it's a series. You have a month, any time to do it. We did the first one and we had 350 participants. And then that is when we realized, okay, this thing is, is massive, right? Um, well, by our standards, this little game, it took root and it, 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 it's really something we can push. From that, um, we decided, you know what, let's take it a step forward. Since it started so innocently as just a game, we never expected it for it to get root like this. Um, let's continue with in that same vein of innovation. So for the next seven months, we, we're gonna be, you know, when in November, we said for the next seven months, we will have these, this going on. Let's try to innovate every month. Just add something new. And we started doing that. And um, it just keep growing and growing and growing. So we, we, we started thinking about how do we reward the people who, you know, the champions of each mission and or how do we, um, how do they interface? How do they look at their results and so on? So it has been a constant evolution and just growing and um, we have a number of elements within it. So, you know. And we're going, to, we're going to talk about some of those. Uh, some, we're going to talk about some of those innovations and the way that you've elevated it. But yes, I want to level an accusation at you right now, Mr. Hayden Alain. I think yes, that Lord. you. I think that you're a yes. chain of man. How is it? And let me explain it because you just said that I do some running, <laughs> and then I see footage of you going up, going down, going left, or right through bush over. What's that about? What, is, what in terms of like right. the terrain that you're dealing with? What 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 do what do that um what does the what does that course look like? So it's an eco adventure race, which is basically trail running. So we're running in, in live trails in Trinidad right now. All these trails are open jeep trails, roads, and and in the forest that the Amerindians would have used, and all these trails and so on. They're still there. We would clean it and people go and they run it and, and a time comes up for it now. Um, is it, it's not like road running, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sport in its own right um, with a different set of training coming downhill and dealing with, you know, um, hard uphills, technical downhills, you might have to cross a little bit of water. So the terrain is nothing at all like a road race. It's very dynamic. And like I said, fusion is the race that mimics life. You know, you're gonna, it's meant to be, ha, ha, to have those hard uphills and the little valleys and the nice views and the technical downhills where you have to engage every sense of your brain to make it happen right, you know? In that way, it, it mimics life. And then at the end of it, there's this awesome feeling of achievement, just like anything in you put yourself through the rigor to, to do, <coughs> excuse me, and you achieve it, same feeling. Um, so it's a race that really designed to fully engage you in outdoor activity and nature and camaraderie, you know, while at the same time really asking yourself a lot physically, you know? Now, if you see how I'm watching you write about Noah Hayden, and you say <laughs> fully engaged with life, and some people might say fully engaged with hospital and all this kind of thing. But <laughs> we're going to get back into, there are a few things you spoke about, uh, community in terms of your teammates, and yes. there's something that I noticed about uh, the fact that it seems as though your ending point is your starting point. We'll come to that yes. and so much more when we return from this break. We are speaking with the PRO of Fusion Adventure Races, Mr. Hayden Allen. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Hayden Allen. I'm still trying to get over some of the things that he spoke about with regard to the Fusion Adventure Race, the Virtual Challenge, the Virtual 7 Challenge. But the Mr. Fusion guy, you said yes. it started off as a game, 
And right. when you say that, I really think that what is what is joke for schoolboy is dead for crapo, and I, f I feel like a crapo. But um, yeah. you said it started as a game, right. and sometimes game does be nice and innocent, and it'd be a little free. So what kind yeah. of, uh, what's the price of being able to register, be part of the challenge? So currently it's free. Because like I said, we started it as a, a game. Um, it wasn't going to cost us anything additional to put out some courses and say, hey, run this and see how your time comes up. Um, but we saw the opportunity there. People, we realized people were actually longing to do something. So we just kept building on that little concept, just building on it, building on it, um, really committing to innovating throughout the duration of the event um, and building it out. But it's all free and we have some powerful, powerful elements of the race now and it's all available on our dashboard. It's, it's out of this world. Um, tabular analytics is the first time I think analytics being used in a race application like this um, to this extent. So we will keep innovating and, and keep bringing something really exciting to, to the floor. And with regard to bringing new things and experiences to the table, uh, you spoke about the fact that you're using analytics in a way that hasn't necessarily been used like that yeah. before in this space. And I think mm -hmm. that the, with regard to the digital app and giving you an right. idea of who has run this already, and that is also, I also appreciate that as well, so you're not mixing groups of people. So right. this person can run this uh, on Sunday, and another person can compete with them or com compete with the time, but they don't yeah. have to do so at the same time. And take me through that as well as the digital app and how it's used, thank you. So all right, the, there are a few things technological pieces that come together when you, you do the, the race. First and foremost, you have to have a smart device, either a, a phone or a lot of people have smart watches that they can upload their workouts, right? Typically, you then upload your workout on Strava. It is done live. You go, you track it with your watch, so you run. And the simplest thing you start, you follow the course, you finish and it uploads to the to, to Strava. That's the simplest part. But you have some things we put in before where we you must have gone to Strava and upload the app, the Strava app, which allows you to track and register. We did registration on race roster and that kind of thing. So it's very, very simple. The when it starts going, the only you only issue we have found in the very early was technological adaptation, I would call it. Just people not really accustomed to running a race and yeah, you finish. It's so critical to, you know, time out or go on your phone and make sure you complete it and that kind of thing. And of course, they may have GPS gaps, things like that, technical issues. But that was an adaptation. After the first, the first uh, mission, everybody knows, charge your watch, charge your phone properly, make sure all your business in order. So when you grow, go on, you will you know, get a proper reading. But it's, it's, it's very technologically driven. So that's actually running the race. But then we also have now another piece of, of technology we brought to the, the table, um, how you see your results, the dashboard which I said is it's tabular analytics. It's very visual. You can take your name, compare to someone else, see their times. It gives you a virtual depiction of the rate, uh, race, and, and you will see yourself as a dot on, in that display in comparison to everyone else in the race and your position in there. Um, so it, that is very new uh, up to this point. We weren't seeing things, results that dynamic at all. You know, it, it's fun. Um, I'm just loaded with excitement. And even though it might be fun though, Hayden, some people might say, nah, I don't like that time because I didn't finish more, I didn't turn off my, my I didn't clock out in time or something yeah. happened, like you said, getting, getting used to the technology. Do people run it more than once? Yeah, we have very competitive people 
you know, I mean, we it's have wicked. top notch athletes in this thing. Some of the the countries, that's marathon, you know, Michael Honore, Christopher Mitchell, these guys are, you know, Castello. These guys are really top notch um, athletes. So yes, they run it and they realize someone plucked a time higher than they, uh, they did and they go back multiple times. I mean, it's not uncommon to see some people go back four or five times just to improve their, their time on that. They're wicked. <laughs> but um, yeah. but what, what does that do for a feeling of community, saying that even though we have to be physically distanced, we still have this energy that we are sharing, this love for this common sport, and being able to yeah. uh, compete against each other, even though we may yeah. not be seeing each other uh, the way that we might want to but following safety protocols, but still yeah. being able to do something that we love. Yeah, but, you know, it's good. While I know everyone will love the feel of a big race, there's a really a powerful energy about that. But we're faced with COVID. And trail running also has its own trickiness when it comes to, to big crowds in terms of fitting them in a, ray, in, a, in a trail. They typically have to do a stagger event to make sure the, the crowd thins out before they hit the trail and that kind of thing. With this method, it, it's any time, you know, pick a time convenient to you. You can go in a group of, we, we encourage you to go in groups, but some groups of two, some groups of five. I've seen people, 10 folks, you know, just make a mini race out of it. You know, they're going to encourage each other to push um, hiking groups. So it's very, very dynamic and it does not, you know, it, it takes away a lot of the pressure of having to make a race. You need to be there at seven, this, that, and things may not go your way on this day. But with Fusion, it's open for a month. I'm not feeling so well today. I may, may not be race ready. I can't pop. You know what? You could do it another day. There's, it gives you so much flexibility that I think that is actually what people love about it. That just that flexibility. It could go anytime. And, 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 and in terms of that flexibility, though, Hayden, what does that do? People. What does that do for the future in terms of saying, okay, well, we're handling COVID, we're dealing with the pandemic, yeah. or the pandemic yeah, yeah, has yeah. been dealt with, and borders are opening again. So someone may not have the time or may not be allowed the time to come to Trinidad and Tobago for a specific race, but at the same time, right. they can block when they can block and say, we come in to do this because we see it on the leaderboard, we see it on the app, and right. we want to be part of this. Yeah. So the this for us, too, is uh, we treated it as an innovation product um, project, but like I said, innovating right through. And, you know, we're bringing it together sort of like a product development. Um, the key is we have a model that works, a model that has a way to chart a course, um, a way for the results to be brought to you in a very exciting way. We can always adjust parameters. So this is a seven month series, but for going forward, if we have to run it again, we could condense it. So if you want more international, um, or regional participation, and you may have to condense it. Okay, let's do it a few courses over a two-week period and create a lot of hype and energy around uh, 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 Adventures Festival for a two-week period where we, we pull it all in. Um, this might be post-COVID. We can do that. The fact is we can give you an exciting course. You can do it anytime you want. You have a lot of flexibility, albeit in maybe in a shorter time frame. And we have this exciting way to bring to you the results. And so we can always adjust the, the parameters in terms of the, how long it goes and that kind of thing to, to really target the regional market, you know? And that is definitely but something it, to look yeah, at. We like the model. And, but you see that fellow who was lying down with his hand on his head and getting his leg rubbed? Most likely that would have been me. But, uh, thank, but thank you very that, much man. for your time and sharing this. And we're looking forward to great things from the Adventure Race, Hayden. And we want to thank you for joining us on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Ronstadt. Have a good night. <laughs>